on March 2nd, detectives from the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine, perhaps the most important anti-corruption institution in the country, handed a notice of suspicion to Roman Nasirov, the head of the State Fiscal Service of Ukraine. This occurred in a KU hospital because, quote-unquote, coincidentally, just as detectives were on their way to see him, Nasirov allegedly had a heart attack and was taken to the hospital. Nasirov is suspected of abuse of office leading to financial losses to the state in the amount of 2 billion Ukrainian hryvnias, roughly 100 million Canadian dollars. The Anti-Corruption Bureau believes that Nasirov allegedly helped fugitive lawmaker Oleksandr Onishchenko dodge taxes. Суд підозри зводиться до того, що працівниками фіскальної служби приймалися незаконні обґрунтовані рішення про відсрочку платежів підприємств, бенефіціарами яких є пан Онищенко до державного бюджету. Considering Roman Nasirov to be a flight risk, the Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine requested that the court remand him. As chief of Ukraine's Tax and Customs Service, Nasirov is the highest-ranking civil servant ever to be issued a notice of suspicion by the Bureau. Because of this, his case may have great significance for the future of anti-corruption efforts in Ukraine, and it has attracted a great deal of attention in the country. For instance, when the court tried to delay the proceedings to remand Nasirov, thus creating a danger that Nasirov would go free, Hundreds of activists blockaded the court building to prevent Nasirov from fleeing. Те, що відбувалося в суді, це вже така, знаєте, посмішка, коли тобі плюнули в очі. Тобто спочатку людину намагаються приховати, потім намагаються зробити вигляд, що її не можна взагалі ніяк вилікувати, а потім виявляється, що немає судді, який може прийняти рішення. Мені здається, що це дуже небезпечний сигнал. Тут ніхто не прийшов когось пікетувати або щось палити. Люди прийшли просто вимагати в суду, будь ласка, прийдіть на своє робоче місце, зробіть роботу. Nasirov's own apparent stonewalling behavior has also been publicly ridiculed and has become fodder for viral internet memes. The case against Roman Nasirov has, once again, cast into the spotlight the deep-seated problem of corruption in Ukraine, particularly in the Tax and Customs Service. And calls have been made to put a stop to the mechanism used by those accused of corruption or other crimes, of seeking shelter in hospitals for the purpose of dodging arrest and obstructing legal proceedings. In general, the development of the case against Roman Nasirov will be an important indicator of Ukraine's progress in its fight against state bureaucratic corruption. Ми зацікавлені, щоб слідство було неупередженим і ефективним. Another very important legal process is currently underway. On March 6th, the International Court of Justice, the main judicial body of the United Nations, began holding hearings in a case involving a legal suit that Ukraine has brought against Russia. Ukraine has accused the Russian Federation of continuously violating international law and abusing human rights. Russia has militarily invaded Ukraine, and its tactics have included support for terrorism, the use of propaganda, subversion and intimidation, political corruption and cyber attacks. Russia is also accused of undertaking acts of racial discrimination, most notably against the Crimean Tatars and ethnic and cultural discrimination, interference and suppression with regard to Ukrainians. If the International Court of Justice rules in favor of Ukraine, Russia will be obliged to obey the court's decision without the right to an appeal. For Ukraine, this will be the first jurisdiction of the government of the Russian Federation to maintain the convention as a convention and decision of the court. The Ukrainian representation in the International Court of Justice is confident that the court will rule in favor of Ukraine, and thus that justice will prevail. I'm Tanya Stech, and this was Ukraine in the News. Canal Oden Plus Oden, the part of the Stockholm Nobel International Program.